A big complaint that I get on this channel is that I always criticize Arya and Jon Snow and the Dornish plotlines of the show, but I never criticize Daenerys. Well, guess what, people? Today you're getting your wish. The show actually managed to get a lot of things right when it comes to Daenerys and her plotline, but they also missed a lot and simplified a lot. That's me putting it nicely. As the show's popularity grew, the showrunners pivoted to entertaining the lowest common denominator. In other words, they dumbed down a lot of stuff. If we're in Marine, why are we seeing Kill the Masters written in the common tongue? How does Daenerys suddenly have control over her dragons after not being able to control them at all? Why does Daenerys complain about needing food supplies, but then immediately after decide to burn a bunch of food supplies? Yeah, it seems like it would have made a little bit more logical sense to save those for your starving Dothraki on Dragonstone, whose only resource is fish. Pretty sure the Dothraki don't fish, at least not in the sea. Speaking of Dragonstone, yeah, it really doesn't make sense for this castle to be empty, does it? Seriously, no one stayed behind after Stannis left? There's no one on the entire Isle of Dragonstone? Cersei didn't set any traps? I mean, King's Landing is like right beside Dragonstone. And they knew that that's where Daenerys was going. And it's funny how Daenerys just walks in. She doesn't send in any scouts to check to see if there's some kind of assassin or something else that could be a danger to her. Yeah, that's another thing. It does tend to feel quite Mary Sue-ish when it seems like Daenerys can never lose. I mean, the biggest upset for Daenerys in seasons was the loss of Viserion. And I don't know if this said more about Amelia Clark's acting or the writing of the show. The writing of the show would be my guess. But it honestly didn't feel like she cared that much. For someone who goes on and on and on about how her dragons are her children and they're the only children she'll ever have, she seemed not so much concerned with the loss of her child and more concerned with the well-being of Jon Snow, who she met like six days ago. Hyperbole? Maybe. The show doesn't care about time anymore. We might as well be watching Lost. Yes, I said it. Lost is terrible. Utter trash after the first season. Goes absolutely nowhere and the ending is totally unsatisfying. Stop pretending like you understand Lost and most importantly, stop pretending like Lost is good. Glad I got that out. So in the show, Daenerys is fireproof. and the book, she is not. Even though she has this extra power in the show, the character is utterly stripped of any other magical plot points. Don't get me started on the House of the Undying way back in Season 2. What a f mess. It had absolutely nothing to do with the incredible visions that Daenerys saw of the future and the past while in the House of the Undying in the books. Plus, in the show, we don't even get to meet the Undying, so what's the point of the name? In the books, Daenerys encounters the ancient undying in a dark room, sitting around a corrupted, pulsing blue heart that hovers in the air. Danny's invitation to the House of the Undying turned out to be a trick, both in the show and in the books, but for different reasons. In the show, the warlocks, or should I say warlock, because Payet Pri is the only warlock that we actually see in the show, traps Daenerys in the House of the Undying because her dragons increase their magical ability. And that concept does follow book canon, I will admit. The Undying captured Daenerys as well as her dragons because she needs to be with them for some vague reason. In the books, the Undying ones seem more intent on feeding on Dany's aura, her magical energy so to speak. The books imply that the Undying ones extended their power by a form of vampirism. The problem with the show interpretation of the Undying is that it implies that a person is freed from death merely by remaining inside the house of the Undying. Payet Pri insists that Daenerys shall remain there with her dragons till time comes to an end. Also, Dany's dragons are never stolen in the books. She goes to the house of the Undying freely to seek answers from the Undying ones. For some reason, Danny's entire Carthing plotline has been reworked in the show, and this is only in season two. Daria, who in the book dies in the desert, betrays Daenerys, killing Eri, who is still alive in the book. Payet Pri and Zarozan Doxas team up and kill the other 13, which definitely doesn't happen. This was all while George R. R. Martin was still on the show. They took this richer, more complicated fantasy plot and replaced it with something more generic. Quaithe is also a character that is strangely absent for most of the show. She shows up briefly in season 2 but is never heard from again. In the novels, Quaithe shows up at many crucial points in time, guiding Daenerys and sending cryptic messages. And that's another thing. 
Some would argue that the book version of Daenerys seems quite Mary Sue-ish herself, but what these people are failing to take into account is the sense of fate and predestination that is tied into her arc. And this relates back heavily to things that were cut from the show, like Danny's dreams in the first season, which slowly show Daenerys how to wake the dragon in the book. Danny's real visions in the House of the Undying and the prophecies that the Undying give her. And Quaithe herself. So, whereas the books bring about the sense that Daenerys is being moved by forces that she cannot see, call it destiny, in the show she's just really lucky. George R. Martin himself referred to the birth of Danny's dragons in the books as a miracle. What does that imply? Also, way too many speeches. Jesus Christ, just stop. How many times do I gotta hear you say I am the dragon's daughter? I get it, you're gonna burn your enemies and yada yada yada. Like, shut the f*** up for five seconds and try and figure out who the f*** keeps killing all your Unsullied. And yeah, that's another thing, the Unsullied get f***ed up way too easily. And the books, there's a story about how a small number of Unsullied stood against thousands of Dothraki. So badass, but they're trash in the show. TRASH! Another point. Book Daenerys is like 13, so it makes a bit more sense for her to be ruled by emotion, but Daenerys at this point in the show has years under her belt as a ruler. Yes, years. To quote Princess Marcella, Durin has been my home for years. Marcella got shipped off in season 2, and Gilly's baby was born shortly after that, right at the beginning of season 3. The child will never age. Anyway, Daenerys, who should be concerned with ruling and protecting her people, should not be risking everything to fly north with all three of her dragons, which are literally the most valued creatures on the planet, just to go save Jon Snow. The level of irresponsibility is mind-blowing. How f***ing stupid are you? It's your fault that Viserion is dead, and that needs to be said. Daenerys in the show as a character is quite plain compared to her character in the book. And compared to other characters in the show like Tywin or Varys, she appears to be quite hollow. She wants to conquer, but why? I'm sorry it just comes across as quite sanctimonious when she goes on and on about breaking the will and then burns people alive when they won't bow before her. I mean, what does breaking the wheel actually mean to her? I thought it meant stopping the feudal system that constantly crushes the small while the powerful benefit. But apparently, it just means bow before House Targaryen or die. The details that we get from Daenerys' inner monologue in the book explain why the character behaves the way she behaves. And a lot of this doesn't translate that well to the television show. In the books, it's quite clear that while Daenerys feels she has to rule because it's expected of her, deep down she longs for a simpler time. The house with the red door, which is symbolic of her mostly forgotten childhood, a pastime when she was free and innocent and happy. Daenerys in the books often wonders about her ruthlessness and has to maintain a balancing act between a strong leader and being a despot. This element isn't entirely missing from the show. Usually it shows up in places which are scenes that were direct portrayals of events from the books, such as the crucifixion of the Wise Masters. In this show, a lot of the colorful characters surrounding Daenerys in the books have vanished. Strong Belwas, who was a former pit fighter who was Daenerys' bodyguard in the book, is cut entirely from the show. The general look of the people in the East is pretty disappointing in the show as a whole. The costumes in Karth are beautiful, but everything after that seems quite samey. There are no crazy hairstyles or exotic wardrobes like in the book. Dario Naharis is the perfect example of the toning down that the television show did to the people of the East. In the book, Dario Naharis is quite a colorful character, literally. In the show, he's just some guy. Him and Euron should hang out sometime. And I love how Danny just leaves him in the inn and she's later like, I felt nothing. Damn, you a cold bitch, Danny. Look, when it comes down to it, I don't feel as though the Daenerys plotline was totally botched. Her story is so essential to the overarching plotline that they were forced to stick with the broad strokes. I believe that Daenerys in the show has mostly remained on track with where she is in the books. That being said, there are a lot of very annoying emissions and very annoying changes that bother me personally. To be perfectly honest, I kinda don't buy that Daenerys couldn't wear purple contacts because they affected her ability to act. Data from Star Trek The Next Generation wore yellow contacts for 7 seasons, 178 episodes, 
but whatever, maybe she had a medical condition. That's a minor issue. You know, at this point in the show, anything goes. Season 8, who knows what they're going to put on our screens. I say Daenerys should just hook up with the Night King, marry the Night King, and just rule over everyone together. She's ruthless. He's ruthless. They don't. She doesn't have to hide it anymore. They, they'd be the song of ice and fire. It'd be perfect. Darkness reigns forever. Thanks for watching, guys.